Dave here, how are you? Today is the 17th of February 2019. I say this because then if you're looking through old videos archived on my other channel, don't forget to subscribe to that because then you'll get information as to what's happening previously and when it's saved. I, was, I think I saved one yesterday. Anyway, um, that's why I do it. I say that so that you can go back through right at the beginning if I haven't got any date, dates there. You can just click on it, let it start, and you'll know where we are. Um, right now, 2019, we're getting towards the end of summer. So you guys in the Northern Hemisphere, towards the end of this unbelievably cold winter that you've been having. So autumn's just around the corner. Um, let me see what have we got on the show today. Before we start on that, I always do this. <laughs> Before we start on that, um, you're, you're probably all aware that poor old John Lafferty's back in hospital again with his polycystic kidney disease. Um, there's a, it's a bit of a catch-22 for him because uh, there's all sorts of weird things. There's, there's a series of numbers that work on the size of the kidney and it's extremely involved, but because he's not basically working to what the system says, uh, as his numbers go up, it's telling a different story to what is happening in his situation. So John will be able to explain that to you a whole lot better than I can. So if you know someone who is in the medical association, high up, lobby them. Get in there and let's see if we can help John get this sorted. I may even get a Facebook page going on it, or John, maybe you could get a Facebook page on it showing all the details about what the problem is and let's get the numbers behind this and push forwards. Get John out of hospital. What the hell? You know, he can't go on dialysis, he can't get another kidney. These cysts burst inside him. His kidney is as big as a football. He only has one left. The other one they took out. So help him out, help him out. Go, go for it and uh, see what we can do for him. Okay, so John is sitting there with his green button. He's got a little green button he pushes and that deposits fentanyl straight into his bloodstream. He's as high as a kite. He probably doesn't even care whether he's got a kidney or not. His legs could fall off and he wouldn't worry. But it's addictive, so we've got to get him out of there. Um, and poor old Julia, broken leg when she went to visit him. So, you know, the Lafferty household is not doing very well. Um, I was going to say prayers and everything. Look, if that's what you do, do it. We've got to get him out. Uh, all right, we, today, today on the show, we're going to cut a melamine panel. I've got it all set up here and uh, apply some iron on edge tape. I've done videos on this before, but I thought it might be nice just to do a refresher on how to do it. And there's all sorts of different ways that we can cut board. I could do it on the table saw. I could do it on my docking station here, or I could do it on this little bench that I've made. And I'm going to do it on here, just show how easy it is. Uh, the next one, a hundred dollar gift card from Trend Timbers. Let's see if I've got a picture of them there. And look at the timbers that you can get from Trend. Aren't they nice? That's a bit of uh, Zebrano and Purple Heart and Wangi and Brazilian Bloodwood. How nice is that? Now, Adrian isn't a big concern. His Trend Timbers is, you know, is, is a yard where everyone used to buy all their uh, staircase material from and still do. But there's a lot of them are made out of MDF these days and carpeted. So all the exotic stuff still is uh, coming from Adrian because he gets it in and uh, away we go. Very, very nice of him to throw up a prize of $100. And as I say, in the description box below, jump down there and there's all sorts of links down there. Uh, but if you go down to there, you'll see there's the raffle copter where it's a $100 giveaway gift card for Australia only. Sorry. Now, last week, the uh, winner of the iMuffs I will tell you a little bit later. Um, and we've also got from a previous winner of a GRS 16, we have a gentleman called Les Sketcher. And he's sent in a story about how one of his wife's ancestors, great grandfather, I think, was killed in a logging accident. Um, and I've got all the details on that. So Les sent in the story to me. And I think that's fantastic. You know, if you've got an interest story that's relating to timber, whether it's personal like this or whether it's just a picture of your workshop or, you know, something cute. You know, maybe we've got some grandchildren in the, in the workshop vacuuming up some mess for, for their grandparents. That stuff, love it. You know, 
And you guys like seeing it. I'm sure you do. Throw it in for me. Um, let me have a look here. Hoping for a change in luck soon. John Lafferty. Stephen Walk Trend is my favourite furniture grade timber. Definitely Stephen. Michael uh, Hosen. Morning Dave from sunny for now Melbourne. Barry Doxy. You are lucky to have Trend. Look after him. Use him. Oh yeah. Do it. Do it. Uh, you drop out there and have a look. It's only at Windsor. So if you're in Sydney or New South Wales, Windsor is just out near Richmond. Go out there. He's 1K towards Sydney from Windsor. It's another suburb. I forget what they call it, but it's, look, go to Windsor and you'll find him. <laughs> What's the other thing we've got? New video, you know, the, this swing set that I've been building. I'm going to show you, I'll show you a short clip. So this is a, a little teaser. Here we go. Higher. I know, you're going real high. So that's a teaser. That's the swing set that I've been building over the last six weeks. And then I had to edit the whole thing. There was a hundred video clips that I had to bring in. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot of work. It was three days work creating that one video and it runs for 30 minutes. So if you're interested in how that video came out and how I built the whole thing, I take you through the whole build. It will be released on Tuesday morning on uh, YouTube. So Tuesday morning, Eastern Australian Daylight Time. So, you know, if you're in the States, that's going to be 17 hours behind Tuesday morning. So it'll be sometime Monday night, I think. Uh, in England, it'll be possibly, uh, probably towards, I, I don't know, you guys work out the times. Um, Mulgrave. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, you like the swings? No blue shirts for the kids. <laughs> No, it's just fine. One day, one day, I'm going to do a black label edition of the show and I'll wear a black shirt. I promise. I don't know when it's going to be. Maybe Barry's birthday. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, okay, so that video is there. Now, if you're one of my patrons, you can already see that video because what I do for a certain level, a certain tier and up, I release the videos early. So... You know, if you, if you join me on Patreon, that video is now live. You just go onto Patreon, click the link, and take you straight in. If you like the video, share it around. Uh, it's, it's one of my better works, even if I do say so myself. And I'm also going to do the fountain video very soon, given the time, because that's another massive one that I've got. I did it two years ago in autumn, this built that fountain, that you'll see in the video as well. All right, uh, it's a fantastic swing set. Drinking Black Label Scotch. No, I don't think so, Stephen. Uh, what else have we got? Some Pro Edge Sharpening Observations. And I'm going to also... No, Barry is not going to be in a blue shirt. <laughs> uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to sharpen a gouge, a wood turning gouge on the Pro Edge. And some other little things that I've discovered with it as I'm going along. So if you're interested in the Pro Edge, or if you've already got one, uh, you're probably discovering all of these things as well. But look, we'll get there. Um, oh, one of the uh, viewers has sent in a sheet lifter. Thanks. I'll read that now. This is from Frank. Let me see if I've got it there. I do indeed. So I'll switch it over. So Frank uh, Nach Nachigal has said, Hi Dave, thanks for the great idea. I saw it tonight on YouTube. Uh, built one fast for me this morning. Works great and my back will also give you a thumbs up. So how cool is that? Uh, jump into this one here again. Great. So again, if you've got things like that, that you've seen a video that I've done and you've built something like that, click the images into me at uh, davestantonfans at gmail.com or even at Stanton Bench. That's fine. Hardox time in England is 09. So nine minutes past 12 in the morning. Okay. Let me see, what are we going to do first? How about we jump into, before we do that, I'll just keep reading. Sheet lifts, thanks. Chat, support the channel through Patreon. Photos from where you're watching or projects you are building. And I'll tell you the winner of the uh, G6 IMUS right now. It was Kerry Sankey. So Kerry, Kerry's in Australia. 
it was open to the world, but you'll see there's a lot of people in Australia watch the show because it's a homegrown event for them. And so they're, they're quite happy to watch it because everything I do here is relative to what Australians can get. So if they can see it in my workshop, they can also get it. And that makes it easy for them. Okay, where are we up to now? We'll do the demonstration on the cutting this, this uh, board and I'll take you through that. So I'll pop that over there. I'm going to turn the camera around and the screen at the same time. And I'm hoping that this is all going to work. So if I go to about there and tip down ever so slightly like that. Okay. All right. That's for another part of the demo later on. And what do we got here? That's not good. Can't see the host. I <laughs> uh, didn't really get this part too organized, did I? Tip it up ever so slightly. There we go. That might get me. <clears throat> All right. Yep, yeah, that's got me. Now, this is a vanity panel that was under my desk upstairs in the office. The problem was that the panel was within 600 millimeters of the back of the desk. So I couldn't stretch my legs out. Now, if I'm sitting for days on end editing the videos, I want to be able to stretch my legs out. So, you know, otherwise I get cramps in my legs and it's a horrible experience. I'm going to show you a little tip with using a track saw that you can either use or you can discard. And it's how I get a very, very, very nice edge. Give me a second. Right. Now, I, as I said earlier, I could cut this board. So I'm going to keep this end because it's already had the scribing around where it went around the, um, the skirting board or you guys in the States and call it a baseboard. And it's also got a hole here for where I have cables coming through the uh, cabinets underneath and then back up through the bench or through the desk into the uh, for the computer and all that kind of stuff. It's got a couple of these little items on it, which I'm going to leave there. These are a little handy item that have got a couple of very, very small uh, nails. And it's a hole there for a, a, uh, probably a one inch uh, coarse particle board screw. And this can lock this unit wherever you want back up to the bench top underneath. So there's a tip straight off. That costs you nothing. Now on the bench, you can see at the back here, I'm going to, because John's in hospital, we're going to use his dogs today. So I'm going to come around to that side. And you'll see John's dogs are a fantastic fit. You won't see that one at all because it's too far away, but you'll see it at this end. And these are going into the rip section of the bench. So the bench is set up so it's got a cross cut or a rip. I've taken the apron off the front of the bench so I can go straight into the middle of the table. I've got a couple of cis ones underneath this panel at the side and that will catch anything after I've done the cut so it's not going to fall and tear. These small standard blue dogs from John, that depth there is thinner than the, uh, the board that I'm cutting. So I can put those anywhere I want along here. So I'm going to, where will I bring it to? I'm going to put it in that one there. And I've built the bench so that it will take a standard kitchen panel. So if you're making kitchen cabinets, this will work. I think the kitchen cabinets, normally the sides are about 570 millimeters wide and 570 is around a couple of mil past this point here. And it comes out to a couple of mil past there. There's all reasons as to why I did this design. Now, this particular panel, I want to finish at 590 millimeters across. So to do that, I'll put a mark there. If I've got a pencil and a ruler of some sort, I've got a ruler here and a pencil. It's not horribly sharp, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to come, come across. You can see it there possibly 590. I don't know how keen your eyes are. And I'm going to do a little mark here. There. This isn't terribly close up, but it doesn't really need to be. You can see what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to push those back against there. I'm going to get a track <clears throat> and I'm going to put a couple of the clips on it. Now, these clips here, these UJK path clips, I think that's what they call them, or track clips, they slide on 
to the track. I'm going to put them on at either end. And then I can hook them over. You can see the, see the clip in the track? I can hook them over there. Come on, you can do it. There, that one's on. And this one, and just fold it over. How cool is that? It's going to hold it in position. Now here's my pencil mark here. I'm going to slide it back along until it's on the spot. There it is, perfect at 590 millimeters. It's so easy. And the track's on. Now this is the part that I'm going to let you know. It can be seen by some as being dangerous, but this is the way I get the best cut. My first cut is going to be backwards. I'm going to put the saw all the way out here and pull it back towards me like a radial arm saw. But the thing is, I'm going to set the depth of the saw blade to one or two millimeters deeper than the track is. So I will set it. The track is five. I'm going to set the saw to seven millimeters. As I'm going backwards, the saw is turning this direction. So it's going to be going down into the melamine and scoring it rather than coming up and scoring it if I was coming from this side and lifting. So it's a huge difference. That's correct, David, a shallow reverse. Uh, 544 makes a 560 cabinet with 40 overhang on top. Well, mine happened to be 570. All right, so here's my saw. And I'm not going to set it at full depth where it is now. I'm going to push it all the way up to here to seven millimeters. So the plunge, that's it. Very, very little. Okay. The other thing I've done is I've put this little guard on the side here. Now this is to reduce dust. I had one person get in touch with me and say, Dave, I've just bought the TS-55, but I'm still getting dust everywhere. And I said, well, how about put this on? That's on there for a reason. So when you put it on the track, you release this, push it down until it touches the surface. It's, it's sitting up on the top part here. It'll, it'll be touching this over here in a second. And then you tighten it up. So that's how that works. Sometimes they have also have a clear one here, but I've lost my clear one. I can't find it. I'll have to go and get one from somewhere. So there we go. I've got that set at the right depth and I'm going to push the saw out past and then do a little bit of a plunge without the saw being turned on and check that the blade is only just going to go in. And it is. As a matter of fact, it's gone in a little too far. So I'm going to bring it back up one more millimeter. Up to there. You know, a millimeter doesn't sound like much, but it is. When you're getting very fine, it does get a, a fair bit. That's tough. That's beautiful. Okay. Okay, John, were you asleep again? Now cut that out. No excuses of being in the hospital. Okay, so you can see I have it set up like that. Now, I'm going to do one more thing. I don't want the board to move around while I'm cutting it, even though I've got the cushion strips on the bench and it's going to hold it really, really well. I have an extra thing that I can do. Now, John makes, this is, this is a little thing for you, John. Okay, John makes these things. These are a cam that are on a 20 millimeter dog. Now, he also sells these little packers and makes them. You can use timber if you wish, but they're lower than the thickness of the track. Now, why I said that, I've got no idea, but it's a fact. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put that there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, you know what? I'm going to get the other camera and bring it over this side so you can see what's happening as well. Because it might be fun. I'm going to turn the camera around this way. And switch, get the mouse so I can switch the cameras. How are we doing for time? 20 past. This is a very um, educational little video that we're doing at the moment. So if we go down to there and transition. And I'll bring this camera over to here for the moment and tilt. Okay, so here we go. These is the spacer and this guy over here is the cam. I should have done this right at the beginning. Okay, now I can put that there, drop the cam in here. And then as I rotate it, that's got it. 
It's not going anywhere. It's extremely safe. Okay, done. Beautiful. There's other setups for this as well that John does. Um, these guys here, and they're matched. You can see it's got L written on that one. There, and there's L written on that. And this goes in like so, and one pushes up against the other. But for me, this is, this is the way I want to do it. Now I'm going to move this camera back again over here so we can see what's going on. And up a little to here. I'm going to put the saw on there, make sure that I'm feeling comfortable. That's the great thing about this as well. Even though the dog, the restraining dog for the track is way down the end, and the other one's up here, I can bring this to any position I want along along the bench because it's uh I, I sorry i got caught i was just reading something there as well i'll read all those comments later on um because the outside row either side of the bench is fully dogged i don't fully dog the center in spots because it's areas there where i don't want to lose things down even though i've got john's yellow dots in there oh sorry he has yellow dots, he makes blue dots for me. All right, so now I've got all that and I feel comfortable with it all. I'm not bumping into anything, that's nice. I've got the dust extractor here and also the power lead. I'm gonna run it at full speed, that's uh, six. Plug the cable in and the large hose, if you use a 36 millimeter hose instead of the 27 with the track saw, you get more air pulled through. Use the 36 for the capex as well, and life will be fine. I'm only, I've only got the little cis vac on it today. Um, why? Because my CT26 is full, even with the uh, separator on it. Uh, it. It's just because I had used it without a separator for ages and ages, and it decided now to fill up. All right, I'm going to throw on the um, earmuffs, not that you really need to. Pull it forward all the way, turn it on, and I'm gonna bring it back slowly. Now the thing is, it's gonna to wanna to kind of pull back to me because I'm going the same direction as the blades. So it's, like it's gonna to wanna to hurry me up. So I have to be very aware of that and make sure I've got a hold of it. Down it goes. See the scoring cut. Whoop, came up. Done. Now, I'm going to set it so that we're going to go all the way through this time. But what I'll do is I'll show you close up how good that cut is. I don't know if you can see focus on it, but it's beautiful. All the way. Lovely. Both sides. Lovely. No splinter guard on this side. Oh, this guy here acts as a bit of a splinter guard, that green thing. But, how's that? Alrighty, next thing. Move that out of the way. I'm going to drop the saw depth. Move this over here. And I didn't have to hold anything. I just felt horribly safe all the way through. This is 16 millimeters. I'll take this off because I always talk louder with the headset on. This is 16 millimeters thick, this board, this board here. And the thickness is five, so I'm gonna set it to 21. So I pull this in and push down until I'm at 21. I'm gonna go a couple mil more because actually if I go actually deeper, the deeper it is, the better it is but I don't want to cut into anything that might be below. So I'm going to, I'll take it down to 25. The reason being, I'm not, if I was going very shallow, I'd be just pushing like this and cutting. The deeper I go, the steeper the angle is where the blade, that looks a bit rude, but you know, where the blade is coming up through the underside of this melamine sheet and it has the board, the, the substrate, which is a particle board of some sort, moisture resistant particle board, um, which is supporting the back of the melamine so it doesn't break. Which blade? I'm just using the fine cut blade. They advise you to use the aluminium blade or the laminate blade, but uh, 
you know, doing this way, the fine cut blade is, is, is fine, dare I say. All right, so I have that here now. I'll put my earmuffs back on again. This is safe. It's not going to catch on. It's, it's not going to drop because it's sitting on the sustainers. And I'll pull it back here. You can see I've got, there's a cis one here, and another cis one under there. No, I don't know if you can see it. I've got two, one either side. And let's do it. Hello all, Ben, it's a while since I've sat down and watched the show. I'm normally in the workshop and watch the show later in the afternoon. Well, straight to the corner, Hilton. You know the story. Okay, I'm going to put the earmuffs on and away we go. Have a look, wait for it to focus, focus on my finger, come on, you can do it. Have a look at that cut. This is the waist, alrighty, this is the waist side. Turn her over, that's the other side of the waist side. Now I don't think that you're going to be able to get any better cut in any other way. This is the absolute best way I know of cutting them. Put that down, out of the way. And let's have a look at all of this. And <laughs> look, look at the bench. There's, have a look at the dust. There's nothing there. You will get a little bit of blowout right at the end when you finish, when the blade comes out from tracking in between the timber and the part that was there already. That's the dust extraction, my little CTL cyst down there running through the separator. And you know, they say that the machine doesn't work with the CTL cyst or the mini and the midi. Well, rubbish. <laughs> it works great. I never had a problem with it. Alrighty, I'm going to go to the other camera now. And where are we? There's some chocolate in the corner, knife edge. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, Stephen. Let me go to the other camera. And there, there we go. So what, what do you think? Yeah, I love it. Next thing to do is to do the iron on edge. So I'm gonna move this out of the way over here. And come back over there. The clips hold every, hold the rail in position. The clamp held that, just come straight up now. And that is beautiful. I don't know, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> so we're gonna put some iron on tape on there in a minute. I'll move the rail out of the way just over here. Move the sustainers out of the way. Like so, just pop them up there for the moment and move things down there. Swing the camera around here and the screen. Take you back to more of a familiar setting that I've got. And bring this bad boy over here. Take that out and that one, move the cam. And that, these things are fantastic. I use smaller ones, John made me some smaller ones. They go on the uh, CNC when I'm using that. They hold a full eight foot by four foot sheet of ply. They're fantastic. Um, so as I say, just be careful with that system though, because the blade is turning towards you. You're not pushing it against the blade's rotation. You're coming with the blade rotation. And if it gets a hold, if you try and do that as a full cut, it's going to come flying out and it's going to get you. So you have to be so careful with it. One or two millimeters, it's not a problem. I'm a magician. Want to see me pull a rabbit out of my hat? <laughs> not now, Bullwinkle. All right, so what I'm going to do now is take those two dogs out. 
This is all John's dogs today. I'm not using any of the big names. It's just yellow box shed dogs. And turn the bench upside down. Undo the legs. Bring it back this way so you can see what's happening. This is how quick it is. The three legs. Get the apron. Oh, I've started doing these as kits. You can get them as a full, full setup or just the top. Whatever you want. I'm, I'm going to do a grid um, and show you how you can do the different methods, different ways of getting it. But the thing is, my advice is just get the whole lot. Get the whole thing. The reason being, you're probably going to want to get it later on anyway, and it's going to be more expensive for shipping. Um, put it on on the last leg in the hole there. I'll spin the camera around again so you can see what I'm doing. Go back to that one and there. There you go. Share the love. So when I design these legs, they're all, the whole height is one or two millimeters taller than a sustainer from there to the top, over the top, and it catches the waist. Um, what else? Uh, these are the clamp that holds that onto the front. So at the moment, that's why if you get any standard uh, legs or bench, bench cookies, it's not going to work with this unless you get washers to pack it up and then you're going to have different heights. The bench is going to be a bit of an angle. These are all made specifically for 18 millimeter or three quarter inch, 18, 19 or three quarter inch uh, ply or MDF. It works perfectly with all of them. Okay, so flip it back over. Oop, some of those have dropped out, but that's okay. And the reason I've got her over like this, hold on, I think she's jumped up on something. Yes. Down the other end, she's on a plug ton. I use these plugs every now and then. They've got a little magnet in the back of them. So you drop them in the hole and then if you want to take them out, it's just a matter of putting something steel over the top and they pop up. John's a cluey filler. Right, what are we going to do now? We're going to put that piece of melamine, I'm going to bring this back a little further. Now that melamine, we want to put an edge on here. I'm going to turn the iron on now. Take this back even further and tip that up a little. Okay, I'm going to, going to go over here and turn the iron on. The reason being, it, it doesn't work while it's warming up. It's got to be hot. Not too hot. This is an old iron that we used to have. It doesn't heat correctly. It only goes to a certain temperature. And that's the one that I use. All right. Uh, where are my bench clamps? Slide that into there. Bring it along. This one from the other end. Like so. Uh, that's that end. This is the side that we just cut. Slide that into there. Up a little. And this one, tighten that up a touch. No. That's got him. Got it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. We need a bit of tape for there. This is stuff I would have been doing on, at, on my own anyway, so I'm happy to kind of do it now. Um, Janus or a bookcase or a mudroom would also work lots. Plus he bought me a drill. That's the ticket, Janus. Um, Ken, don't forget the chocolates, lost wits. Offer to the wife, rebuild the kitchen, then buy a festival saw track when do it. Yes, that's one way of doing it. I just tear it at the right spot. I just tear it off. I'm aiming that camera up a little bit more. Right there. All right, so there it is. That's the tape. Now this is, a, this is an iron-on tape. I might switch the cameras back again over to the front, if it'll work. Uh, where are we? There and there. 
yeah, I think this will be a better camera. Like so. There we go. So there's the tape. It's been stretched out. I've got the panel clamped on the side. It's got the anti-slip on the side. And now I'm doing it with Festool anti-slip as well as a standard, just as a letting you know as I'm going along. Um, it can't slide down the front. It's not going to damage the face. I could put any veneered timber on there, melamine, high gloss, poly finish, anything. It's not going to worry it. So I think that the iron should be just about ready. It'll let me know in a second. Got that sitting there. Okay, who's got some shirts that I need to sort out? Um, a piece of wood. I've got a tiny little piece of uh, rosewood, I think it is. It doesn't matter what species it is. After I put the, the tape on, I'm going to put this on and run it backwards and forwards like that. Okay, you can use a cork sanding block that does the same kind of thing. All right, here we go. I'm going to put it on, have a little bit hanging out either end and the same amount of overhang either side. I get all that sorted first. Hold it there so as I'm pulling it out, it will move until I get it straight and then I just put my finger over the end. Okay, here we go. So put the iron on. Some people say to use brown paper on top. I haven't really worried about it. My iron is pretty clean. So keep it level as you're doing it. I also do a little bit of an angle and a bit of an angle back the other way and a little bit at the end and that's it. And then quickly get the block and push and that pushes the glue down tight. Done. Turn the iron off. Otherwise, you see those ads on TV. Someone left the iron on. Oh, I can't enjoy my holiday. I think I left the iron on. Or, oh my goodness, the chips. Everyone will remember, in Australia will remember that one. <laughs> Drink of water. You enjoying the show, guys? Okay, here we go. A couple of tools that I use for this part. This is a little end trimmer. You don't need these. You can do all this with a chisel. But I thought, you know, why not? I'll show you that. So this guy here, you put on the end there. And I think I was going to switch to the other camera for this one because you can see it close up. Uh, switch over to there and bring it in closer now for that part. And down. Okay, that should show you what I'm doing. Here we go. <clears throat> this end here, this is the, the little pair of scissors basically. It shears off the end part. So I put that there, hand over the top and squeeze, done. It's brilliant. And I'm gonna do it at the other end as well. Done. <laughs> See that? There's a little guy there. Alrighty, these guys here, on the side of them, it holds uh, one, two, three, eight knives in here. There's a knife, a knife either side, and also a, a trimmer to give an angle on the top there as well. I don't know if you can see it inside, whether it's gonna be any easier. Like so. Also, there are directional arrows. It says push towards the arrow that way. Otherwise, if you go the other way, it tears the stuffing out of it. Now, also, you'll notice I've got a little white mark here. That's telling me that I've set this, these knives, because they're adjustable. I've set those, and they're the ones I want to use for the melamine. So, there's the arrow. I turn it around this way with the white side down. Now it's spring loaded, so I can work, I just squeeze it when I put it on there, like so. And you wanna watch this quickly, done. There's the offcut. This is all beautiful. And now what I can do, oh, it's just magic. 
I love it. What I can do now though also is I think I've got a little bit of sandpaper here. I got a bit of paper out earlier that's the right grit. I use, uh, let me see, what one's this one? Yeah, I normally use 400. So this is a piece of 400 grit paper. This green stuff, it lets me know straight away, looking around for green for 400. If I find some green that hasn't got a sign on it, it's all done. That block that I used, I put it inside as a sanding block and I just give it a light rub, both sides, just to take the sharp off. Now, if you find, I'll switch cameras again, back up to the front. If you find that there's a little bit of a lip here, you can take that off with a chisel. Just use a chisel, rest it against there, and I'll take that off here now to show you. you know, and it's, this isn't groundbreaking, but it's enjoyable to do for yourself. I, someone says, ah, kitchen cabinets look nice, or those cupboards in your bathroom look nice, and say, yeah, I made them. Yeah. <laughs> it's always fun. Those out of the way. I'll see if I've got a sharp chisel down here. I should have, seeing I've got the... Uh, The Sorby Pro Edge. We're going to do some stuff with that in a minute. Pop that down. Now, oh yeah, she's sharp. This is, uh, let me see if I swing that camera around again. Go showing it to a camera. The camera's not even having a look at what's going on. So, get in front of the whole thing and it can't focus on anything in the background there. So this is my wide chisel on the back, all done on the Pro Edge and a diamond stone. Now, the other day I was talking about using the Pro Edge for, uh, for flattening the backs. Probably not a great idea for real fine stuff, but for general work, it's fine. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to do a slight pair. You can see there's a little bit here and there. Can't feel it at all now, that's great. And give it another quick rub. Beautiful. So, we have it completed. And tell me if, if that isn't as good as you're gonna get off the shelf. You're probably not gonna see that. If I do that and get down in there, you might see the edge now. It's pretty nice. Okay, there we go. So now this afternoon, I can put that back up on the desk and I'll just close the end of the cabinet off. Um, all right, so a couple of you people want to join the... Uh, that's cool. I just, a little notice popped up beside me while we're going along. Uh, right. I'm, I'm reading some things at the, at the same time. Uh, my trimmer like that keeps springing apart in the drawer, so I put a rubber band around it. That's a good idea, Michael. I lost one of the springs this morning because it's been a while since I've done any edging. And uh, that's a great idea. Okay, so I noticed there was a couple of people wanting to join the Dave Stanton Livestream Facebook page. And that's where we have another kind of little community. And I'm happy for people to join. I do do a check on you. So uh, if... Uh, if you're into all sorts of kind of weird stuff, sometimes I'll say, nah. If you're uh, a wholesome person like me, <laughs> get found in the bottom of a shower at 1.30 in the morning, well, you're in. You're not a, not a problem at all. Okay. Uh, let me have a look here. Hilton Bond, what size Festival Vacuum would you recommend for a small workshop? I can't decide between the 26 and the 36. Um, get the 26, Hilton. The reason being... The 26 and the 36 are exactly the same machine, but they have 10 litres difference capacity. That's all. If you're wanting to travel at all, the 26 is easier to transport. Um, I bought the 26 and I've also just recently bought the, uh, the separator to go on top. So hardly anything goes into the, uh, 
into, into the dust extractor now. So the 26, I think they've got on special till the end of March, that's in Australia. And then also, uh, I, think it's, I think it's about two or $300 off. So it's worthwhile, jump in. It's got the Bluetooth, oh, sorry. Has it got Bluetooth on it or not? No, you can put the Bluetooth on it. And uh, that's all, I love the Bluetooth. You know, people have said you're lazy having the Bluetooth. Well, every now and then, when I, I just switch it on from right where I'm at, rather than having to duck down every time, up and down, up and down, up and down, Bluetooth's great. Uh, I haven't got to walk backwards for it. It's just like having a remote on any of my other dust extractors. Um, let me see. Uh, I get distracted by these little things down, down the side again. So yeah, Hilton, if you wanted to what I, do what I did, get the 26 and the separator. The separator is fantastic because it doesn't have the cyclone hanging out across the top. I've got other things sitting on top of the separator. I've got all the, the, uh, the tools, the cleaning tools, the, the wand and um, the crevice tool, all that kind of stuff. They live on top, so it's all handy. It's right there. And uh, yeah, it's going to be about the same price as a 36 to do all that. So why not? Crazy if you don't. Um, let me see. What do we got next? That's correct. Two hundred odd dollars off. Yep. So that's the separator is going to cost you around three hundred bucks, in comparison to what it would have cost. There you go. Uh, let me see what do we got next. I'm going to have a look down the side here. And we've seen the the, uh, the swings and the trend timbers. Here we go. The red cedar. Now, I'm going to read this story, whilst you feast your eyes on this book matched piece of Australian cedar. It's not Western Red. I, I was wrong by saying it was Red Cedar. This is Australian Cedar. It's a beautiful timber. Okay, so Les Sketcher, who was the winner of the GRS 16 PE, sent in this story then about this piece of cedar that he has. This is called the demise of Johann Anders. Now, I think Les's wife's ancestry is German. So I'm going to read through this. There's only a page. So Johann Anders <clears throat> uh, and Caroline Rice was Johann's wife. And four of their children migrated from Altstrelitz, Germany, via the Hamburg port to Brisbane in the colony of Queensland on the 16th of July in 1870. Um, the Franco-Prussian War began on the 19th of July, 1870, and they travelled by free passage on a German windjammer, the Humboldt. Now, I've, I've shortened this down a little bit, um, Les, so please forgive me if there's parts that I've taken out. All right, so uh, Johann and his family settled in the Logan district at Jimboomba, Jimboomba, where he selected a bush block and built a settler's hut there. Johann worked with his eldest son, Paul, clearing timber and with the aid of a bullock team, dragged, dragged timber to a rafting ground on the Logan River. In the next few years, Johann's family increased to six, where Caroline delivered two more girls to live in a bush hut. Now that on itself is unbelievable. These things were only one room. Okay, so Johann, no toilets, nothing. This is, these people did it tough. <clears throat> Johann found he could support his family with his logging interests. This continued and the younger children attended the Scrub Creek Cool. What a cool name for a, a sub at Scrub Creek. But life in the bush was suddenly disrupted when in April 84, 1884 that is, a chain broke on a log that Johann and Paul were parbuckling to the rafting ground on the Logan River near McLean. Nearby, Wilhelm Bobermine was working on his farm when Johann's son, Paul, raised the alarm that the rolling log had led to his father's demise. Uh, Johann was standing immediately behind the log when the chain snapped and he could not outrun it. The thing just crushed him. Uh, after a hundred years later, Johann's great-granddaughter, who is uh, Les's wife, Beverly, and, and Les, uh, visited the Logan area only with the knowledge that her forebear had been killed in a ro log rolling accident. They first visited the John Oxley Library in Brisbane and then armed with a newspaper report of the incident from the Queenslander, they attended the state archives to check out an inquest mentioned in the report. Their next move was to Logan Village where we were directed by the editor of the local press to a farmer who knew about the pioneers of the district. His name was Alf Bobermine, 93-year-old descendant of Wilhelm. Alf and his son welcomed them into their home, which was opposite the rafting ground, where, just near where um, Johan was killed. 
Alf and his son welcomed us into their home, which was, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, already read that part. We explained our discoveries of the inquest at the state archives, and they were astonished, just as we were, that a link from the past had been re-established. At the end of the visit, they gifted us with this slab of Queensland red cedar. Cedar Grove is nearby, but I doubt there is any cedar left. Much of it was used for sleepers on the Toowoomba track. How impressive is that? So... Let me go to this one and back up to there. If you've got any stories like that that you think people might stop for about five minutes to have a listen to, and it's, got a, it's, it's relative to the timber industry or to, to what we all love and do, send it in to me. You know, these things are just fantastic. Yes, it was exploited. I have a, um, a wardrobe, a freestanding wardrobe that's very ornate on the top. And it's one of Arthur's, and it's all Australian cedar. And it's absolutely beautiful. I think I might take a couple of photos of it uh, when I tidy my room up and I'll show you some pictures of it. So the, the Western Red, oh, sorry, the Australian cedar, I keep on calling it Western Red, I'm an idiot. The Australian cedar is absolutely beautiful. Uh, let me get back into here and we'll go over to the other. You like the story, Barry? Thank you. I'm going to go over to the Sorby and we'll have a bit of a look there. I'll bring this around like so. And I'm going to switch the cameras over. Stay with me, guys. Don't go to sleep. And do the transition to there. Now, you'll see I've got the mop on the side. That is bloody lovely. That's for cleaning up the edge of a chisel. Now, you'll also see that I don't have the guard on. And that's for a reason. I wanted to show you why the guard is there. Now, if you're doing something, you might think that this is just like having a belt sander that doesn't have a guard on this side. But the thing is, your hands, let me raise this up a little, your hands are up above the machine. So let's go back a little bit from there. So if I was using this as a belt sander, I'd have my hands up here. No chance of me getting a finger caught in there and getting dragged through and broken or down here. So I have this here with that mop on. Now the mop has got a very, very coarse thread on it. That's a taper on purpose. And if I tape, push it down there like that, you can see that that mop comes off like so, very quickly. I'm going to take this off and slide that off. This is the 3000 belt and this makes things hot very quickly. I had comment the other day, you know, the, the finer grade belts, do they get hot? They do, they get hot very quickly. But the 60 and the 120, and to some extent the 240, they don't. The 60 stays cool for a very long, long time. I'm gonna run it in the direction that it's supposed to be and over the top of this plate. Now, there's one other thing that I can tell you that I do with this now. If I want to flatten something quickly on here, and the other day I was talking about, you know, if you have it sat on the guard at 90 degrees and push it across here, the plane blades won't work very well on it. So the way that I get past that, and it's probably not something that the guys that make this machine would endorse, but it's how I do it. You might see that I've turned the machine around sideways where it's mounted from where it was. So I had the machine turned around this way. Now it's going this direction. I'll come back a little bit and tilt up. <clears throat> so, move all my belts out of the way up here. I should really make some kind of a, a racking system up here for them to live on. Um, what I do now, we'll undo that one and this one. I drop that down all the way like so and I can put a chisel on here and move it backwards and forwards and then the belt is turning this way. It's pulling away from me. So I'm not going to have the chisel flicked at me. I can also do that with a plane blade here. Now the thing is, plane blades are thinner and don't have a handle. So you've got to be extremely careful holding onto the plane blade out the back here. And the plane blades have normally got a slot down the middle. So don't go sticking your finger down through the middle. What I've been doing is I use a block of wood on top for a plane blade. So I put the plane blade in there, 
hold it down like that and let it do a quick on the back. As I say, it's nowhere near as accurate as a granite uh, stone that's been set to maybe one or two thou tolerance over the whole thing. It's a rough and quick way of doing it. So that's just a by the by. As I say, I'm letting you guys know things as I'm traveling along. So I'm going to put this up to there at 100 degrees. I'm going to put the guard back on because I'm a good boy. Now, it's very unlikely that I would catch my fingers in there working from the front. If I'm working from here, very unlikely. But it is possible to slip and get your finger stuck in that one. So always put the guard on. If, and uh, if you have an accident, it's not my problem. <laughs> so see that? That comes through for the mop to go onto there as well. And that's for a reason. You might be sharpening away and the mop takes off the burr. Instead of stropping it on your hand, it does it quickly. I guess it's most, mostly for, um, for turning tools. But the only thing I don't like about these, these little uh, handles here, they can get cross-threaded easily. So I'm not a real fan of those ones. But nonetheless, they're there. I'm going to take these off, turn this around a little bit. And I'll move that camera in a second. I'm taking the small one off, which I use for chisels. And I'm going to put the large one on. And where's that handle? I'm sure. I'm sure it's up here. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is, down there. All the way down there. So, Derek, I don't know if any of this is going to help you out at all, buddy, because I know you've got one of these. So I'm going to put it in the back one there before I put that secondary one on. And slide it up and down until I locate that hole. There, found it. And I'm going to set this up at 90 degrees. I'll bring this camera around here so you can see what's happening there. Come in closer. How's that? Got it. And this little guy here is the other screw that goes in down the back there. We set it to 90. That's gone straight in. And then tighten this one up. So this now is 90 degrees to that. Then we use their, um, this guy. <laughs> and the tolerances are unbelievable. Okay, now I'm going to get the gouge. And the reason I've got it round like that is I'm going to straighten the end. So the end of the gouge, you might see, uh, could be better. So the plan is to put the gouge in like this and push it straight up there until the shoulders are all in the same position. That's the plan. I do have a bucket of water here as well that I will use for quenching. And I'm going to put my finger on that because this is the first time it's been turned on with that. And it was just ever so slightly touching it. Push this in. Cross a little. Even wear on the belt. And you can see I'm nearly out to the tip. Now remember, I am not a turner. Okay, that's all done. You can see I've got a horseshoe shape there. Turn her off. Give her a little quench. It didn't need to because, you know, I can touch it still. This is just, it's only on the, on the um, other belts. How are we going for time? I'm going to come over and have a quick read. Ah, yeah, that's a good idea. Put a cover over that. Okay, I instead of a cover over it, I'm going to put the mop back on. There. That's a big indicator to me that it's there. There we go. How's that? Are you happier with that? Having that there? So it's, it's showing me what's happening. All right, now I'm going to take this back to... 
I think the gouge was 25 degrees. That's a little more than that. We'll go back to the next one. Uh, the second one, it is, I think it's 20. Let me see. No, it's not 20, it's 25. So you see, I've just been moving it and then checking it by line of sight down the side here. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's 25 will do me. Now, I, the other day I said I don't like working with it up like that. So I'm going to release and drop it back a little. So it's not such a problem for me. Pop that back there. That's all out of the way. And you can still see it all right. Come into about there. That's pretty cool. All righty. Now we're going to get rid of this uh, flat section there and make that take it right up to the inside. You can see it's been a while since I've ever touched this. Here we go. I've just moved it across a little bit. Oh, that's looking beautiful. Got to work it a bit more in the centre. I've watched some of the Sorby videos and they say work the top, work the sides and then join them. I'm going to work the top still. As I say, I am not a turner. But that's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to move it over here. I don't want to wear the belt out in any one particular area. So I'm coming right over to the edge. Getting very close, still no bluing. That's getting warm, but I can push it against my hand. It's starting to get hot. I'll cool that down a bit. <clears throat> Move it across ever so slightly. Keep working all of the belt. Very close. Cross a bit further. Okay, I'm there. Can you see it? Very, very, oh, just the tiniest bit more. I'll cross a little bit further. Doing the edge. Looking pretty good. Have it a bit more of a drink. Out a little bit further. How good is this? I'm going to do this side now, bring it back over here. A 
a little bit more. That's gonna do me for the moment, guys. Oh, hold on, what I'll do here is I'll put it on the mop, aim it down. And also on the inside. Turn it off. So there you go. Give it a quick drink. So that old chisel, old gouge that's seen many, many better days is looking pretty fine. Now I need to work this side a little bit more and that side, can you see there's a slight flat spot there and I have to grind those off, but we haven't got time to finish that off today. But I thought I'd share those a couple of things with you. I'll switch back over to the other camera. Time to go home. Let me see, where are we? Uh, back over here, transition away from there. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'm a Stanton, not a Turner. Okay. All righty. So, uh, even so, with the mop in place, still put a cover on it, then it will all be safe. Okay. Thanks for that, Alan. Um, okay, guys. That, I think that's it. I'm going to read down the side here. I'm going to make sure I haven't got anything else here. Oh, what I've got is I've got some of the entries in for the GRS 16. Um, revolutionary features such as dust prevention, for prevention and that it can be worn with your prescription eyeglasses. That was from Ron Carr. Um, Larry, eye hearing protection in one. Bill Gilmore, I haven't even been wearing that thing as well. I was using that. I should have, really, shouldn't I? Ah, oh, well. Um, they provide dust protection, da, da, both ear and eye protection, dust seal around your eyes. Look, as I say, the winner for that one was Kerry Sankey. Kerry, I'm going to flick you an email and also to George at the same time. If you guys can, uh, another chisel back to usable, I'll tell you what, the next time I get the lathe out, I'll say, there you go, look at that. That'll be in another five or 10 years. Yes. Um, what was I gonna say? I forget, that's because I'm old. Thanks for watching guys, and uh, keep on coming back. If you like what I'm doing, remember, uh, share it around, let other people know. The other thing is, as I say, Tuesday morning, Australian Eastern Daylight Time, the video will be released on the swing set and uh, I'll just throw that back up a little bit again as we're going and uh, then I'll jump into the last little bit of uh, scrolling text and all of the patrons. Thank you very much for supporting us uh, in what we're doing here. And uh, look after yourselves, be nice to each other and I shall see you next week. Bye. Yes, John, what can we say? Get a bloody Facebook page going and try and lobby. Get these guys to fix you up, mate. If you're not in their system, yet you're falling in between all the cracks and I'm sure there's other people in the world as well, just in your situation, it needs to be sorted. Thanks for watching again, guys. See you next week. Have a great week. See you later. Bye.